We all know that the intermission interview is usually pretty stale and full of cliches. But the other night in Montreal, AJ Greer gave us one for the ages. And I'm going to break it down today and talk about just how special this Boston Bruins squad is in advance of tonight's game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things Spoked Beat. Today is Thursday, January 26th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day, free and available on all your podcast platforms, as well as on YouTube. So please do smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. If you're on Twitter, Instagram, you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins. You can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren as I pop it up on the screen there. It's a snow day here where I am in Guelph, Ontario. We got uh, 20 something odd centimeters. Buses are canceled. So if you hear any shouting in the background, that's two of my kids playing Fortnite with their friends who are also stranded at home. So the Bruins tonight in Tampa Bay to take on the lightning. Tampa, I guess, is the official name of the city. And it's a big test for the Bruins. We all know they're playoff history against Tampa and we all know Tampa's amazing year back in 2019 that was rudely interrupted by the Columbus Blue Jackets I touched on that yesterday on the podcast to begin today though I wanted to go back to the other night in Montreal and uh, AJ Greer took part in the intermission interview on Nessin with Sovia Yerkstevich. He's a native of Joliet, Quebec, which was pretty close to Montreal, I believe just northeast. Uh, the 26-year-old has found his spot with the Bruins and was given the opportunity to play his first professional game at the Bell Centre in Montreal. Um, and like I said, off the top intermission interviews are usually get pucks in deep, never give up, keep the foot on the gas, stay out of the penalty box. But AJ Greer opened up and had some really cool things to say about living at his dream and playing for the Boston Bruins. First, he said it's a bucket list, uh, opportunity for him to play in Montreal in front of friends and family. It means a lot to him to step out on that ice. He played in Montreal as a kid in exhibition games, went to the Bell Center several times to watch the Canadians play. In fact, he emptied his bank account one time, $200 to come to a game. Didn't even think twice because of how special an NHL game was to him as a kid. And life just comes full circle. You work hard and good things happen. Greer, of course, drafted in the 2015 NHL selection process. Uh, Second round by the Colorado Avalanche. Didn't really catch on with the Avs. Bounced between New Jersey and the AHL before signing with the Boston Bruins this past offseason. Uh, Don Sweeney taking a chance on this guy, giving him a a two-year contract that was uh, one way in nature. 
which was pretty uh, pretty significant, really. In terms of playing for the Bruins, Sophia Yerksevich asked him what it's like coming in as a relatively new guy, and Greer said it's a brotherhood. As soon as you step in that locker room, there's a set of values, a respect, not only for the guys around you, but for the logo, for the city, for the hardworking people who contribute to success in TD Garden and all over. You go see games that they're playing on the road. There's Bruins fans everywhere. There was a ton of fans in the game that I went to in Ottawa last month. There was black and gold at the Bell Center the other night. And there no doubt will be Bruins fans down in Florida for these games against the Lightning and the Panthers. Greer says, the Bruins cherish that so much, just being able to have so many loyal fans and fans that stick with us. We have a special group this year. That's been a key word for the Bruins is special. And it's an honor every day to come to the rink and be part of the group. Now Greer only appeared in uh, about seven and a half minutes of ice time the other night. In and out of the lineup, he does have four goals, four assists in 32 games this season for the Bruins. I've been very impressed with his play as of late, and I think he is a very effective choice for fourth line role for the Bruins going forward. I just wanted to highlight that interview because it was uh, really great. If you haven't seen the video yet, go search it up on uh, on YouTube or on Twitter. Uh, I watched it again this morning and it, it literally almost put a tear in my eye just hearing him talk about how special it is to play for the Boston Bruins, a team that's in Florida to take on the Panthers tonight. We'll preview that game later on in the podcast. Coming up, we're going to do our weekly cup check where we look at the top five teams around the NHL and assess where the Bruins rank among them. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our brand new exciting sponsor, FanDuel. They are the official betting partner for Locked On. They're the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, even better because they have many great features that make sports betting fun and easy. New customers can join today. Get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. All on an app that's secure, safe, super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet. Get $150 in free bets, win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On and the NFL. So the Bruins tonight in Tampa Bay, league leading record. And even when we look at the top five teams, how the Bruins rank among them, they're not just the best team in the NHL this season. They are on pace for arguably the greatest regular season in NHL history. They have 80 points through 47 games. They boast a point percentage of 851. That would put them on pace for 66 wins and 140 points, breaking the wins record held by the 95-96 Detroit Red Wings and the 2018-19 Tampa Bay Lightning. Only two teams have held point percentages above 800 for a full season. That would be the 76, 77, and 78, 77, 78 Montreal Canadiens. Both of those teams won Stanley Cups. Um, now, the Bruins, of course, incredibly dominant. You do get the loser point in this era. The Tampa Bay Lightning benefited from that. Again, we know they lost in the first round to Columbus. The Bruins playing chess, not checkers, by signing Nick Foligno, who was the captain of the Blue Jackets that year. Um, 
doesn't matter right now. What matters is the regular season, the Bruins ranking first in goals for per game, goals allowed per game, the penalty kill, second in the power play, and they are on pace for the best season in NHL history. Now, who could possibly challenge them for the right to play for and win the Stanley Cup? Who are the other top five teams in the NHL this season? Well, let's look at point percentage. And again, that is the percentage of available points that a team has grabbed so far this season. The next closest team, well, all four of the next closest teams are in the Eastern Conference. So that could prove to be uh, detrimental to the Boston Bruins to have such formidable opposition all coming from the East while the West is a touch weaker. Second place right now, 723 point percentage, record of 39-8. and eight through 47 games is the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, They might have to rely on rookie goalie Peter Kachetkov again, as it looked like Frederick Anderson was banged up last night in their uh, game against the Stars, a game that they won in overtime. Uh, Their goal differential, not super impressive. It's well below some of their competitors. I think it ranks uh, seventh right now at plus 28. But still a very good deep team, one that we know beat our Bruins in the playoffs last year, albeit without David Krejci in the mix, without Pavel Zaka. Um, Some improvements have been made by the Bruins this season. New Jersey Devils still kicking around in third, a 702 point percentage. Plus 41 goal differential, which ranks in a tie for second with the Dallas Stars. Uh, They are a team to be reckoned with. Jack Hughes playing out of his mind, perhaps jumping into MVP contention. Dougie Hamilton, our old friend, is playing very well. And Vitek Vanacek has grabbed the number one goalie role there. And then, of course, there's the two other Atlantic Division foes who could really put a dent in Boston's plans. The Toronto Maple Leafs right now, 30, 11, and 8, 694 point percentage, plus 37 goal differential. They are followed by the Tampa Bay Lightning, 30, 15, and 1, 663 point percentage, plus 30 goal differential. Those two teams seemed destined to meet in the first round as the second and third place teams in the Atlantic. Right now, they are third and fifth, respectively, in the Eastern Conference. So uh, a bit of a disadvantage for them, to be sure. The Bruins, with their record of 38-5-4, plus 83 goal differential, would be currently matched up with the Washington Capitals, who are 25, 19, and 6 with a plus 16 goal differential. Not too worried about them in the first round. Once you get to the second round, it's a bit of a different question. Now, out west, the top team doesn't rank among the top five right now in terms of point percentage. Dallas Stars, sixth at 650 point percentage. They do have a second-ranked plus 41 goal differential. They are looking like a pretty deep, fun team to watch out there. Uh, Seattle's up there at 649. Winnipeg Jets with a 643-point percentage. Vegas Golden Knights have tumbled a bit. They're now down at 622. Watch out for the Colorado Avalanche, though. They've won six in a row, defending Stanley Cup champions. And if they continue to get healthy, get on a roll, then they could very well be in line to challenge and defend their championship. But right now, the top five teams in the NHL in terms of point percentage 
are all from the Eastern Conference. Goal differential, it's Boston, New Jersey, Dallas, Toronto, and Winnipeg, who are the top five teams. Boston, hottest team in the NHL at the moment, 9-1 and one over their last 10. They've won six in a row going into tonight's game. New Jersey is very hot, though, 8-1-1. One, and one. Edmonton 7-1 and 2 despite losing to the Columbus Blue Jackets last night. Seattle, Toronto also continue to roll. So there's some pretty good teams around the NHL, but the Bruins far and away the best team right now and historically so uh pace-wise. Going to preview tonight's game against the Tampa Bay Lightning here in a moment. Thank you once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day. Podcast is free on Apple, Spotify, Pocket Casts, Amazon Music, and also on YouTube. So please do subscribe to the video and audio versions of the show so that you never miss a thing. The Bruins and Lightning have met once already this season. Back on November 29th, the Bruins won by a score of... Actually, they played twice this season. The Bruins have won both times. 5-3 decision in Tampa on November 21st, and then a 3-1 decision for the Bruins on November 29th. This will be the final time they meet in the regular season. Not a huge fan of this schedule. I think you should play divisional opponents at least four times each year, twice at home, twice on the road. That's a topic for another day. They are third place in the Atlantic, seven points back of the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're six and four over their last 10. And of course, we all know who to watch out for on the Lightning. Steven Stamkos is red hot lately with six goals over his last five games. Nikita Kucherov, always sneaky good and sneaky dirty at times. Uh, Braden Point is up there. Uh, Alex Kalorn, Pat Maroon on defense. Victor Hedman, Mikhail Sergachev, and rookie Nick Perbix, who is making uh, a nice name for himself down in Tampa Bay in net one of the best goalies in the world. If not the best goalie in the world, Andre Vasilevsky, he's got a nine seventeen point percentage, which comes in under or just slightly over Jeremy Swayman and under Linus Allmark, who likely will get the start tonight after it was Swayman who went the other night. So the Bruins, Yes, they're 19 points ahead of Tampa Bay in the standings heading into tonight's game, but we all know how dangerous the Lightning are. They have a fifth-ranked offense, 3.61 goals per game. Bruins, 3.81 in first. Uh, They're allowing 2.96 goals per game, which is a bit uncharacteristic for them. That's 14th-ranked. The Bruins, again, 2.02 goals per game allowed which is far and away the best mark in the NHL. Bruins have the advantage on the power play, second ranked versus Tampa Bay's third ranked. First ranked penalty kill, Tampa is 13th in that regard. So it should be a very good game tonight. One, two, uh, I wouldn't call it a measuring stick game per se. Maybe it is for, for the Lightning who won a pair of cups after losing to the Columbus Blue Jackets in 2019, made it all the way to the final last year before losing to the Avalanche. Um, In terms of shot attempt differential, the Bruins rank ninth at the moment. Tampa Bay is down in 14th. So a bit of an advantage there Uh, when it comes to expected goals at five on five. The Bruins rank third, Tampa Bay ranks seventh, and high danger chances for the Bruins rank fifth, while Tampa ranks third. So they're going to get in there. They're going to try to make life difficult for Linus Olmark or Jeremy Swayman, try to come out on top 
with the win and make a statement that they are still a team to be reckoned with while the Bruins have an opportunity to sweep the season series. On tomorrow's podcast, I'm actually going to be joined uh, by a guest, and that will be Lauren Willand, formerly Lauren Campbell, who you may know as Boston writer for Nesson, co-host of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. We'll talk about tonight's game, preview the games over the weekend against uh, Florida and Carolina, and uh, just bring you all the latest on the black and gold which is what we do here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. Hope you're all doing well. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.